Okay. So, hello everyone. I'm Katarina Kosovel. I'm a PhD student of Nedjelka Žagar at the University of Ljubljana. And I will present a small part of my research that was done in collaboration with Franco Multeni and Fred Kucharski. Uh, the title is Propagation of Tropical Heating Perturbations to the Mid-Latitudes and the Role of Orography. Um, I will start shortly with motivation. Then I will describe the methodology um, and the results will be presented in two parts. So for the, first, for the short term response and then for the medium term response, I will briefly look at the role of orography and then summarize. <coughs> the motivation for my st studies that uh, tropical processes strongly influence mid-latitude weather processes in the medium range when longer forecasts. And at the same time, analysis uncertainties and short-range forecast errors are largest in the tropics. They are shown to be associated with both balanced and unbalanced circulation across all spatial scales. Um, little is known about the impact of the tropical analysis uncertainties on the growth of forecast errors in the mid-latitudes. Um, the perturbations in diabetic heating in the tropics have long-term impact on forecasts of the mid-latitude circulation. So we aim to quantify the role of unbalanced component of the large-scale circulation response to these perturbations in the tropics and their propagation outside of the tropics. So um, for the experiment, uh, we ran a speedy model um, and we did an ensemble. Uh, here is the um, here is the sketch how it we did it. So I, we had a continuous unperturbed run of for, 20, for 32 years, and every first January for the third year on, the model was restarted with continuous additional heating perturbation, and then run for three months. Um, so we got 30 ensemble members in Northern Hemisphere winter. Um, the, this plot shows how the heating perturbation at 500 hectopascals looks like. It has random component in it, so this is averaged over 90 days. Um, heating perturbation was adopted from unpublished research of Franco Molteni and Fred Kucharski. Um, daily mean outputs were analyzed with modes decomposition. Um, modes decomposition works through the um, projection of fields in physical space to the model space. And the circulation is split in balanced and unbalanced components um, defined in terms of eigensolutions of the linearized primitive equations. The balanced part consists of quasi-geostropic Rossby waves, and the unbalanced part projects onto the inertial gravity eigensolutions that propagate either westward or eastward. Um, we don't need to go that much into details about inertial gravity waves for my research. So um, we will just uh, say that inertial gravity modes are actually unbalanced modes, and that's it. Um, modes decomposition software was developed at the University of Ljubljana. Um, more info on it you can get on this web page or come and ask me after. Um, on the web page, you can also get the software and browse through the decomposition products of the ECMWF forecasts, such as maps of balanced and unbalanced circulations in tropics and extra tropics. And you can also look at uh, this kind of uh, global energy spectra. This is just an example. Um, how this decomposition works? This is an example. Um, this is one random example field from our experiment showing geopotential height perturbations and winds. And we can split this field to balanced and unbalanced part. Balanced part is stronger, unbalanced part is weaker, but unbalanced part is important in tropics. Um, advantage of this decomposition is that you can easily um, get easy direct access to the unbalanced part. Um, both can be further split into the particular modes. Um, 
balanced part is actually a sum of many Rossby waves. We have three examples here. Um, the N -N Rossby N, -N, -N, -A N1 wave is um, more or less confined to tropics, um, but the others have minima and maxima in mid-latitudes. And um, what is important here is that odd modes are symmetric, regard, uh, sorry, yeah, symmetric regarding equator and even modes are anti-symmetric. Mm. In the unbalanced part, the most energetic mode is Kelvin mode, um, and the remaining unbalanced mode are just weaker, and I won't go more into details with them. Um, now we should focus on our experiment. Uh, in the first few days, the response is mostly conf to the tropical heating is mostly confined to tropics. Um, and then um, after the first few days, the Rossby wave train forms in mid-latitudes and the perturbations start to propagate around the mid-latitudinal circle. So um, first, I will show an example for short-term response. Um, the total response has been substantially studied in the past. So what we see here is a barotropic uh, beginning of the Rossby wave train that is entering to mid-latitudes. And then we have a baroclinic response in tropics that is mainly um, in the source region. And it looks like it consists of Kelvin wave and Rossby N1 wave. But for confirmation, we can look at the decomposition. Um, the Rossby wave train goes to the balanced part, and what looked like a Rossby N1 wave is also here in the balanced part. Uh, we can look at this Rossby N mode separately, um, and we see that uh, the strongest minima and also the other maxima, small, smaller, are approximately co-located with minima and maxima in the total balance, in the whole balance response. Um, but they are modified with higher modes. What looked like a Kelvin wave in the total field is actually partly balanced and partly unbalanced. Um, but the unbalanced part itself is um, to a large extent Kelvin mode. So now to the medium term response. Uh, in the medium term response, this is example for day 14. And just note that the uh, scale for uh, geopotential height perturbations is not the same anymore. Um, the strongest response is in northern hemisphere Rossby wave train. But there is also a weaker Rossby wave train in the southern hemisphere. Um, as the, those Rossby wave trains project to the balanced part, the uh, balanced part is actually pretty similar to the total, except for the tropics. And as we can already guess, the remaining part is in unbalance. Um, looking back to the balanced part, uh, we see that we have here a pattern that resembles again to this uh, Rossby N1 mode. Um, and we see that this uh, minima is actually at least partially, but to quite some extent, Rossby N1 mode. And um, if I put here the Kelvin mode, which is the second uh, important mode in the tropics, we see that even though we are now in day 14, they're still confined to the close to the region, the source region where we have this heating. Um, and if we compare the location to day three, we see that they practically didn't move out. Um, actually, we haven't got much, um, we didn't look much on uh, this, 
but we suspect, suspect that it's because of the dipolar structure of the um, heating that we used. Mm. Okay. As the, um, the uh, tropical, tropical response is more or less confined to the source region, uh, in the northern hemisphere, in, in mid-latitudes in general, the perturbations do propagate eastward. And as we know, um, in northern hemisphere, the general circulation in the mid-latitudes is um, very much influenced by the orography, especially the, um, how the jets. So and the logical question was how this orography influence the um, path of the perturbations. And we did three additional experiments where the only difference between the main experiment, now the reference experiment, and those three were um, that part of the northern hemisphere orography was just lowered to maximum 100 meters. Um, the first one was without Himalaya and Tibet. The second one was without Rockies and Greenland. And the third one was the combinations of both. Um, so somehow expected result was that in mid-latitudes, the intensity and propagation of Rossby wave train are affected by the large scale orography. But rather than showing these plots, I will show something else. Uh, as modes decomposition is actually linear and orthogonal, uh, we can do uh, statistics in modal space and get some additional information um, on what's going on. So <coughs> these four plots show the variance in a spectral space. Uh, this one is the reference with all orography in, and then we have another three. Uh, meridional modes, those numbers just represent the Rossby waves I show you at the beginning. Um, this is all for balanced modes because in mid latitudes, the Rossby wave train, as I showed, projects to the balanced part. Uh, and zonal wave numbers just tell us how many waves we have around the globe in zonal direction. So we are interested in mid latitudes. So we are interested to the, on the modes two and with the numbers two and more because N1 is in tropics. Uh, what we see is that removing orography actually um, <coughs> reduces the variability in meridional mode two, which is anti-symmetric um, regarding equator. But um, it increases variability in odd modes, those that are symmetric regarding equator. Um, <coughs> this actually shows that the um, hemispheric differences are reduced. And um, the other thing is that um, with removing choreography, we have more variability in meridional mode three, zonal wave number four. This is actually just uh, the pattern of a uh, um, Rossby wave train in the mid latitudes with the zonal wave number four. This is where the most variability is in um, when we remove orography. Um, so I presented a novel method for the decomposition of 3D global circulation to the balanced and unbalanced component. And uh, it has been applied to diagnose a global response to tropical heating perturbations. Uh, in tropics, the balanced and unbalanced components of the response have comparable amplitudes. Circulation response in tropics is confined close to the heating source, which is possibly due to the dipole structure of the heating. Um, and the mid-latitudinal response consists of balanced Rossby wave train. Removal of orography increases the variability in symmetric Rossby modes, and the largest variability appears in Rossby mode three at zonal wave number four. <coughs>